A little over 30 years ago, a drug was introduced to the bodybuilding world that was, uh, until that time, very obscure. Now, what happened was rumors circulated that this particular drug was given to horses, and the horses actually gained a, a tremendous amount of muscle mass. As soon as this information trickled down to bodybuilders, obviously they craved this drug. They wanted to use it. Today, the drug is very familiar among bodybuilding aficionados. It's called clenbuterol. It's been around for years. It has a reputation as a cutting drug. In other words, it helps you to reduce body fat. And also, some believe it helps you build muscle mass, and there is some truth to that. Uh, I will state right from the fact that the, uh, the doses to, for example, uh, help you lose body fat and the doses to help you build muscle are vary widely. In other words, Lower doses, using lower doses will actually will actually promote body fat loss, but to actually gain muscle requires higher doses. And as with any other drug, the higher the dose, the greater the chance of side effects. And we're talking about clenbuterol, you're talking about some very serious side effects, which I'll talk about shortly. What is clenbuterol? Clenbuterol is a compound that belongs to a class of drugs called beta-2 agonists. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of physiology, uh, but ba basically beta receptors are uh, adrenic receptors that interact with catecholamines such as epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, uh, there's uh, three basic types of, of beta receptors, beta-1, beta-2, and beta-3. Uh, the beta-3 one is the most controversial because that exists mainly in animals. Beta-3 has tremendous thermogenic effects. In other words, it's involved in... in uh, uh, definitely promotes fat oxidation. Uh, beta-3 activity in humans is questionable. Uh, they do think it exists. It's related to something called brown adipose tissue, which is beyond the scope of this video, but, but, but I will be discussing it in depth in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. But for now, know that a beta-2 agonist is a drug that works by interacting with beta-adrenic receptors. Uh, in the case of clenbuterol, uh, clenbuterol was developed as an asthma drug and also to treat breathing problems, like as I said, originally in animals, especially horses, and also to treat chronic obstructive pulmonary disease such, a, uh, um, such as bronchitis and, uh, and other uh, diseases of that category. Uh, beta-2 agonists work by basically dilating bronchial tubes, which tend to be constricted in asthma. Uh, they now know that the underlying cause of this constriction is excess inflammation. Again, that's beyond the scope of this video, but I will say that the, the predominant drugs to treat asthma today are not beta-2 agonists. Beta-2 agonists are reserved, usually in spray form, are reserved for asthma attacks because they'll rapidly dilate your bronchial tubes. The, the main treatment to control asthma is actually corticosteroids, again, in spray form. Again, that's all I'm going to say about that because this video is not about asthma drugs. Well, it is about asthma drugs, but only one, clenbuterol. As I say, beta-2 agonists are often used to treat asthma. Now, clenbuterol has never been approved for use in the United States. Why is that? A number of reasons. First of all, by the time clenbuterol came into existence, there were several other beta-2 agonists that worked just as well but were much shorter acting. The problem with uh, clenbuterol, it has what, the, what scientists call a very extended half-life. In other words, it has a, a half-life refers to the time it takes the body to break down half of the initial dose. And when it comes to clenbuterol, we're talking 25 to 40 hours. In other words, to break down half the initial dose takes up to 40 hours. This drug lasts a very long time in the body. And again, the way it works with drugs, the longer a drug stays in the body, the greater the chance of side effects. In the case of clenbuterol, you're talking mainly cardiovascular side effects, which could be very serious. I'll discuss that in a minute. Now, clenbuterol uh, has a 70 to 80% absorption from the intestinal tract, so it is highly absorbed. In addition to being used uh, to treat asthma, as I said, Clenbuterol is, is a popular weight loss, supp uh, uh, weight loss supplement, uh, and uh, a liquid form of the drug is approved for the treatment of uh, airway obstruction in drug uh, in uh, horses. That drug is called Ventapulmin. Uh, it's a liquid form. <laughs> Oddly enough, some bodybuilders actually have used the liquid form of clenbuterol, just like they use Winstrol V, 
an anabolic steroid, also called stanozolol. Winstrol V, the V stands for veterinary. Winstrol V is a veterinary drug which is very popular among bodybuilders. Now, the problem with veterinary drugs is they're not quite as processed as drugs slated for human use, so there can be impurities involved, could cause health problems, but that's beyond the point. The real problem with liquid clenbuterol is that it's very potent. In fact, there was a bodybuilder a couple of years ago, a pro bodybuilder named Mohammed Beneziza, who uh, was a tremendous, uh, you can look at photo, look him up on, the, uh, look him up on Google. I, I interviewed this man several times, really nice guy. He died, I think he was something like 33 years old, something like that. He took a number of drugs. He was uh, competing in some shows in Europe, and the, the poor guy died. Uh, the cause of death, uh, I'm still not sure what really. Some say it was potassium depletion from using diuretics. Others say that it was from an overdose of liquid clenbuterol. He might have used this ventopulmin drug. Again, this is speculation on my part. I can't say for sure. The only thing we do know for sure is that this poor guy died, and he was really a nice guy. I can attest to that because I knew him. Very nice guy. And, and wow, what a physique, by the way. Anyway, the Latin America, uh, even though clenbuterol was not approved for use in the United States, it was approved for use in Europe and Latin America. And uh, they, the uh, typical dose used to treat asthma in those countries is 20 to 40 micrograms. Microgram is one thousand of a milligram. It's a very small amount. Outside the United States, clenbuterol is available by prescription, as I said, for the treatment of asthma. Uh, it's uh, a lot of news reports when they talk about clenbuterol. A lot of me popular media they refer to it as a steroid, <laughs> but it's not a steroid. It's not an anabolic steroid. A lot of reporters who are not versed in science, they hear that clenbuterol can help build muscle, so they right away they jump the gun and assume it's an anabolic steroid. It is not a steroid. As I said, it's a beta two agonist. Uh, it actually, it actually, but it has been given to livestock to increase the amount of lean mass and minimize the amount of, of uh, fatty tissue. In fact, there's been outbreaks in Europe. This has been written up in medical journals. Where I, I was one in Spain, I remember, where people ate uh, clenbuterol tainted meat. In other words, there was enough clenbuterol still left in the meat that they consumed, where they all had to go. Literally, hundreds of people had to go to emergency rooms because they were getting. A clinical science of clenbuterol, clenbuterol overdose, mainly tachycardia, fast heartbeat, possible cardiac rhythm disturbances could be very dangerous. This was from eating clenbuterol tainted meat. I should also add that a number, I'm not going to go into the list, but quite a few athletes have been busted using clenbuterol. They've been caught on drug tests because they're not aware of the long half-life of clenbuterol, and they don't get off the drug in time for the drug testing, and it shows up in the drug testing, and they get busted. Uh, now, the, now, clenbuterol can still be found in the meat of livestock even after it's butchered, as I said, and that like, and this again has led to illness in Europe and Asia. Uh, because of this, the United States and Europe <coughs> monitor tissue samples from livestock in order to detect the presence of clenbuterol. In other words, it's banned in American uh, meat. Clenbuterol has also been re recently observed as an additive in street drugs, heroin. They actually use it to cut heroin, clenbuterol, which is really weird because, I mean, heroin is normally, normally a, uh, a suppressant of the nervous system. If it's cu cut with clenbuterol, you can get all these cardiovascular systems and you'll be scratching your head wondering, why am I getting all this heart palpitations and stuff? Clenbuterol, as I said, has been observed to increase muscle mass and reduce body fat. And as I said, it remains in the body six days after consumption. Traces can remain even longer than that, maybe 10, 12 days. This is why these people get, these athletes keep getting busted from using clenbuterol. They have no idea how long it lasts in the body. And their coaches don't seem to know this either. Uh, so anyway, uh, clenbuterol promotes muscle growth while helping to reduce body fat. That's known as a repartitioning effect. In other words, clenbuterol actually promotes muscle or lean mass gains at the same time promoting the loss of blood. Basically, you're, you're uh, getting rid of fat while increasing lean mass and muscle at the same time. It's known as repartitioning. You know, that you're changing the composition of the tissues of the body. Uh, as I said, clenbuterol has a couple of notable side effects, especially on the heart. Uh, the side effects can include increased heart rate, also known as tachycardia, heart palpitations or arrhythmias, chest pain, which can be mistaken for a heart attack, 
tremors, you know, you, you get like this, your hands get like shaky, anxiety, electrolyte imbalance where you lose minerals. Uh, when you take clenbuterol, the potassium that's circulating in the blood is shifted from the blood into the tissues, and you can wind up with a condition called hypokalemia, which is low blood potassium, which is extremely dangerous to the heart and can cause heart rhythm disturbances. That's one of the causes of the heart rhythm, heart rhythm disturbances. Uh, clenbuterol also causes uh, negative changes in other minerals, including magnesium, which is also important to heart function. This explains why clenbuterol is uh, so dangerous for the for for your heart, and also if you show up in an emergency room uh, with a clenbuterol uh, overdose, a lot of the symptoms look exactly like you'd get in something called septic shock, and, uh, and the bad part uh, or septicemia, which used to be called blood poisoning, the really dangerous thing about that is if the emergency doctors treat you for septicemia. The same treatment uh, that's often used for septic shock, if you give it to a person who has a clenbuterol overdose, it'll kill them because it's further, it further stimulates the heart. The way to properly treat a clenbuterol overdose is to give drugs that will block the effects uh, of, uh, of, of clenbuterol on the beta receptors, specifically what they call beta-blocking drugs. Esmolol is a typical one. This is a short-acting beta blocker. It's the most common one given in emergency rooms to treat a clenbuterol overdose. Uh, it basically stops the effect of clenbuterol on your heart, and it saves your life. Some other effects of clenbuterol can include coronary, coronary artery spa, vasospasm, where the coronary is tighten up, and, and that can actually cause a heart attack. Uh, rhabdomy rhabdomyolysis, which is a rapid breakdown of muscle tissue. As muscle tissue breaks down, elements in the muscle, for example, myoglobin, which is the oxygen-carrying pigment in, mu in muscle, if enough of it gets carried in the blood to the kidneys, it can block the filtering units of the kidneys and cause kidney failure. That's the main danger of rhabdomyolysis, which, by the way, you can get from just training. You don't have to take clenbuterol. If you, get, if you do an unaccustomed workout on a very hot day, for example, let's say you go from doing 10 reps to 100 reps, you can actually cause so much muscle breakdown that you can push yourself into rhabdomyolysis. It's actually fairly common. Uh, also, some of these cross-fit uh, uh, people who are pushed into hard workouts without a period of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, getting used to it, they can easily get rhabdomyolysis also. As, as I said, uh, clenbuterol gets, pushes potassium out of the blood into the tissues, so you wind up with low blood potassium or hypokalemia. It also can, uh, initially raises your blood uh, sugar, called, which is called hyperglycemia, but then you have a reactive high, uh, hypoglycemia. In other words, this is why it looks like septic shock. Your blood sugar goes re really high and then suddenly takes a dip down and you have low blood sugar. So that's called uh, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Uh, now they, they've done several reviews. Uh, I'll talk about one or two of them here, but a review of adverse reactions to clenbuterol reported in two poison control centers found that 11 of the 13 cases were due to clenbuterol use. Clenbuterol uh, Clenbuterol can be used for weight loss or performance enhancement. And, and again, it comes in tablet, liquid, or injection. People using clenbuterol for this purpose typically use between 0 0.06 and 0 0.12 milligrams per day, which is higher than the recommended dosage for asthma treatment, uh, you know, as I, uh, which basically means that bodybuilders and especially, I can tell you that clenbuterol is an extremely popular drug among female fitness, bikini, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, physique categories, because the women know that it's not a, uh, or they're told that it's not an anabolic steroid. It won't ma masculinize them, but it will definitely help fat loss. So, I, I again, this is speculation on my part, but I, I, I have a feeling that a large percentage of these female fitness uh, people are, are taking clenbuterol and in the dosages I just mentioned. Uh, uh, I should also add that it's very important to note that because of the uh, clenbuterol works with beta-2 receptors, the beta-2 receptors and the beta, all the beta receptors, the beta-adrenic receptors, they're all very sensitive. In other words, when you flood them with uh, large amounts of, 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 of elements such as catecholamines, which interact with them, the beta receptors tend to shut down. They downgrade. And, and, and they're very sensitive. Uh, if, you hit, if you take clenbuterol, you know, that's considered a concentrated source of stimulation for these beta receptors. They're going to downgrade in as little as two to three weeks. What this means in a practical sense 
is if you use clenbutyl every day after three weeks, it's not going to be able to act, interact with the beta-2 receptors or beta receptors in general, and it will not do anything. It does nothing. There's been some uh, 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 ways around that. For example, taking it on a on a uh, on a on a, uh, a one one on two off, or I think it's either two two days on one off. I can't remember. Uh, in other words, a schedule where you take it intermittently that'll extend the active activity of uh, of clen clenbuterol anywhere instead of three or four weeks. You might extend it to six weeks before your beta receptor shut down. Uh, there's also a drug ketofen, I believe it's called, which also supposedly extends the uh, the effective uh, time of uh, clenbuterol. So. Uh, as I said, uh, what else do I have? Oh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, there's a uh, substance found in uh, natural cocoa called clovamide, which in, in, uh, in cell studies, uh, in, vit in vitro cell studies, it does exactly what clenbuterol does. Now, I'm not saying that if you eat natural cocoa, that you will uh, you'll get the same effects as clenbuterol, because of course clenbuterol is a drug; it's much more powerful. But it's interesting to note that kind of natural forms, if you want to call them, of clenbuterol do exist, and one of them is called clovamide, and it's in cocoa. It's just a little uh, little thing there for you. Uh, as I said, some bodybuilders have had some serious effects. This is a study I found. Uh, it's basically, it's in a journal called Clinical Practice in Cases in Emergency Medicine. The title is Unsuspected Clenbuterol Toxicity in a Patient Using Intramuscular Testosterone. This was a 46-year-old uh, man who presented with tachycardia, fast heartbeat, low, low blood potassium, and elevated blood sugar after ingesting testosterone obtained from Brazil. Uh, now, what happened was this guy, uh, you know, had a back problem. And he was told that testosterone would help heal the problem. So a friend of his gave him some testosterone that the friend had obtained from uh, Brazil. Unfortunately, what this man didn't know was that his testosterone, which came in ampules, actually was composed of boldenone undecyclinate, also known as equipoise, which is not testosterone, but it is an anabolic steroid, very popular one, equipoise. It, it did, and it also contained clenbuterol and vitamin E, but it was listed on the on the on the actual label of the drug. It was listed as testosterone cypionate. There was no mention of of, uh, of boldenone, clenbuterol, or even vitamin E. It was listed as testosterone cypionate. So this guy took the drug, and he wound up getting an overdose of clenbuterol. Uh, you know, he had to go to the emergency room. He was treated with the fast-acting beta blocker. He was okay. He didn't have any heart attacks. <clears throat> I have a, a list here, various. There's a bunch of uh, other ones, all involving bodybuilders. Uh, this one was a 31-year-old bodybuilder. Uh, he took clenbuterol. Uh, he was also taking uh, tamoxifen, also known as Navidex. Uh, he had palpitation, shortness of breath, 50 minutes after, 30 minutes after ingestion, rapid heartbeat, low blood potassium, myocardial ischemia, lack, meaning lack of oxygen to the heart, uh, lack of blood flow. Uh, another uh, bodybuilder, 18-year-old bodybuilder with no history of asthma. Uh, he uh, subject sudden onset of shortness of breath, heart racing beginning 90 minutes, chest pain, tremor, and extreme sweating. Here's another one, 22-year-old tw uh, male bodybuilder, uh, th th 30, mi uh, 30 milligram ingestion of clenbuterol two hours prior to presenting to emergency service. It's a large dose of uh, clenbuterol. He had heart palpitations. He said his heart was racing right out of his chest. That's what he said. Extreme sweating, sinus tachycardia, that's fast heartbeat, evidence of in infralateral ischemia. His heart wasn't getting enough blood. He was getting a vasospasm of his coronary arteries. Uh, another uh, uh, Last one I'll say, 17-year-old male bodybuilder. He reported finishing two-week cycle of taking oral clenbuterol, the brand name Spiropent. 20 milligrams, one tablet twice a day for two days, alternated with a two-day break. That's that two days on, two days off uh, way uh, that, uh, of taking clenbuterol that I mentioned earlier. He had stabbing, retrosternal chest pain. Uh, uh, he had uh, tachycardia, fast heartbeat, elevated temperature, elevated troponins, which is proteins released from the heart when the heart is under stress. For example, when you have a heart attack, you release more of these proteins called trop troponins. It's an indication of heart damage. So uh, those are just a couple of the uh, examples of, of uh, people that have used uh, clenbuterol, bodybuilders, that have had some serious problems. 
Uh, I will tell you that, let's sum it up by saying that clenbutyl probably is effective as a weight, as a fat loss drug. It really is. But remember, it only lasts, because of the sensitivity of beta receptors, it only lasts actually three to four weeks maximum. If you think it on a two-day on, two-day off, you can extend it to maybe four, five to six weeks maximum. Any more than six weeks, not doing anything. If you take the amount of clenbuterol needed for fat loss, you can expect not necessarily to have heart problems. You might have an occasional heart palpitations. You'll most likely get those tremors, and you might also notice cramping in your hands. The cramping is caused by, that's an indication that the potassium has been pushed out of your, your, your blood into the muscles, so you're, you actually have low plasma potassium, which will cause those cramping sensations in the hand. So that's about it for uh, clenbuterol. Uh, you know, it's going to continue to be used. I, I can tell you a quick funny antidote. A couple of years ago, a friend of mine, uh, you know, I wanted, I was, I started a diet. So this uh, guy says, hey, Jerry, let me give you some clenbuterol. No charge. Uh, it, you know, I, I knew about clenbuterol. And I, I figured, okay, I'll, I'll take it for, for a week or two just to kick, kick you know, kickstart my fat loss. Well, I took the, this so-called clenbuterol. And the thing I wrote, wrote, noticed right away was that my face got very red. My skin felt, felt very hot. And to make a long story short, the, what the guy gave me was not clenbuterol. They were niacin tablets. What I was experiencing was a niacin flush. There was no clenbuterol at all in these tablets. And I figured that out after the first dose because I was familiar with niacin flush. And I, it was obvious I was getting that. These were not clenbuterol. So I threw them in the garbage. And uh, that was my uh, one experience with if you want to call it clenbuterol, I never actually used the real clenbuterol. So that's about it for clenbuterol. I hope this uh, information was useful to you. If you want uh, the most in-depth information available on nutrition supplements, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, not necessarily clenbuterol. I'm talking about natural techniques, uh, exercise science, hormonal therapy, women's health, ergogenic aids, many other topics. I cover many topics. Nobody covers as much information as I do in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. 40 to 50 pages every month, more like a monthly ebook than a newsletter. Very in-depth, no advertising. I don't push any products on you at all. I just give you solid evidence-based information that includes current science along with my 57 years of of, of studying and empirical knowledge, things I've learned along the way, which I will pass on to you. You'll save a lot of money by reading this newsletter. You'll learn a lot. Uh, there are things that are in this newsletter that can actually save your life. I can help you, you know, for example, maybe prevent cancer, heart disease, all this kind of stuff is covered in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Uh, I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site where I, where I answer brief questions submitted to me only by current Applied Metabolic subscribers. Also, uh, I, I have to tell you that I don't uh, answer unsolicited questions. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments under this video. Uh, please, no trolls, because <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm not going to answer trolls, obviously. I know what you're up to. I'm not going to play that game. But, you know, <laughs> but anyway, I, I appreciate any kind remarks and, and uh, you know, I appreciate constructive criticism. Uh, however, I, I don't really usually answer comments left under my video. I will, depending on my mood, sometimes uh, if it's a particularly compelling question, I, I, I might answer that. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a possibility. In other words, it's not a sure thing. Whereas if you're a subscriber, I will definitely answer your questions without que uh, your questions. Absolutely, I will definitely answer them if you're a subscriber. And the best way to do that is to send me an email through the uh, email portal on my Applied Metabolics site. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt the dog. Best animals. Uh, cats are good, you know, but I, I my preference is dogs. Take care.